people have been asking, for example, why it is that we do in this interview. And I think maybe just in the interest of a declaration, uh, the time that you gave us a call, I think, was the 4th of April, right? That's correct. Uh, and we spoke about this interview. And I've got to say, I don't know if you know this, but there would actually been people that contacted me about interviewing you years prior, like around about 2015 or whatever. Okay. Uh, common friends, et cetera, and so on. But at the time, one, I felt like it definitely wasn't the thing to do because I don't take... I guess the little bit of influence that I do have and the platforms that I've got access to lightly. And I do realize that sometimes, especially when you do have that kind of access, right? Uh, PR can be used to sanitize an individual or legitimize a person that other people feel like don't deserve that platform at the time, you know? Uh, And I also felt like personally you had to answer for a couple of things uh, by way of the public protector's report uh, and also just in terms of the legal process. Since then, you've actually appeared uh, at the commission uh, of State Capture Commission and you've answered the questions that they posed to you. In 2018, you were arrested. Uh, then through, due to lack of evidence, those charges were withdrawn. And since then, there's no other charges that have emanated from the allegations that we know. Uh, and so then after watching some of the interviews that you've done, I thought to myself, well, for me, these interviews didn't answer any of the questions that I had. So then when you did call me, I thought, okay, this time I do have questions I want to ask him. And that's essentially why you're here. Uh, So thank you very much for joining us. No, thank you very much. Um, You well researched. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, You've you've taken us back and you've brought us to this point. And I agree. I think at the time, um, the discussion and interview would have been null and void. Because there's a lot going on. Um, I think now is, is a good time. I won't say the perfect time. There's never a perfect time, but it's a good time okay. to have a conversation. So, yeah, uh, as you can hear us in the studio, if you do have any questions, you can send them to us, 086 You can hit us up on WhatsApp as well on 0636 But other than that, the show will continue and uh, the interview will start after this. Uh, now, generally speaking, right, before this interview starts, for me, I like to start it off with something. Could be whatever. So I want you to imagine you're 85 years old, right? Yep. Uh, you're sitting in front of your grandkids. They're asking you to tell them about their grandfather, which would be you. What do you tell them? I tell them that they're, well, myself, long, hard road. Yeah. Um, we've learned from our elders. There's no easy path. I think that's one thing that I've learned myself. I've looked for shortcuts. They don't exist. Mm. Um, whatever it is that you do stick to your focus stick to your discipline but don't be afraid to try new things as well I tell them that and the rest is for them to figure out you know Mm. know, that's that's their life to live you know Um, parameters I was given simple parameters in my life and I've turned out okay I guess and that's I'd like to do that for my my kids and my grandkids as well so simplicity wins the day for me we've actually got a tweet here somebody was asking us to speak in this is Zulu Zako Namlambo you actually don't speak this Zulu, do you? You understand it, but you don't speak it fluently. Yeah, the speaking is, I, I speak here and there. Um, I've had a, an interesting upbringing, mm. you know. Um, not out here to make excuses, but I've lived in a lot of places. It's because you were born in, in Maputo. Life. That's correct, Mozambique. Um, Portuguese was actually my first language. Mm. Um, and from there, we've, we've shifted around. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So now that we are here, why did you want to do this interview? I think it's it's simple. Um, there's there's a lot of a lot of us that are are set up in our different silos and our different areas of expertise sectors, and I feel it's it's time to to pull together. Um, you know, as you know, we don't have we don't have a history. I mean, may, people may not know that. Um, we 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 know. So when you talk other. about we, who are you talking? I'm about? talking about everybody. I'm talking about you and me as well. Okay. You know, um, I see what you've been doing. Um, I respect what you've been doing. Thanks. You've you've walked you know, you've walked a, a long journey. You know. Um, following, we followed your career, the, the MTV based days mm. you know, when you started off, um, the, the talent search and everything. And you know, you came up top of your class. And fast forward to 2021, you are you've got a seat around the table, you know, and that's that's something that a lot of people don't have. That's a lot of uh, something a lot of people are not able to do. Longevity is is not a simple thing, consistency is not a simple thing. Mm. Um, and you're a businessman as well, you know, so. 
I think more than anything, my 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 view is there've been a lot of discussions. Um, I'm sure on your side as well, just in your own circles and networks um, that we've been having, that you've been having, that I've been having, and I think it's time to bring it together. You know, like-mindedness is what I'm about. Yeah. So. Since when have you felt that way? Because I'll tell you what, um, before the conversation that you and I had over the phone on the 4th, I don't remember ever speaking to you, but I do remember meeting you uh, because we've got a lot of common friends. So uh, there was a friend of ours who had a dinner at her house and I was there. I remember seeing you there. Sure. Uh, And then never spoke to you until approximately a month ago when we were setting out this interview. That's correct. So when you say that you are now feeling that it's time for the people of South Africa and you included everybody to unite, yeah. since when have you had that feeling? No, I've had that. That's how I've, I've, I've grown up. Um, if you look at, at, at my friendships, my history, I'm always about pulling people together. Um, I'm about making my networks um, examples of, of who we are. And if I see, and you know, you you in the mix a lot of times, you know. Mm. <laughs> we see you in your wars, your tours, and everything. Mm. And you know, you you are you are fighting battles that some people may understand, some people may not understand. And from my side, I may be wrong. To a large degree, you are misunderstood. Um, but you just you know you're just wearing your heart on your sleeve, and you're fighting for what you believe in. And I respect that, um, regardless of of how other people may feel about it. From my side, it's 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 up to me to have that conversation and get that that view that viewpoint for myself and not to have it behind the scenes. Let's, you know, let's have a conversation out in the open. So then what is it that you believe in and why are we uniting? Um, I believe that iron sharp, sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I believe that there's more that we can do together than we have um, accomplished in our own setups. Um, so when I look at the situation, you know, there's people that I speak to all the time just like you do, just like anyone else does on different levels. But pulling people together is an issue based on expertise, history, ego, whatever it is. From my side, I want to be able to say, you know, we've got mutual friends as well. And likewise, there's been people like, yo, have you ever met the dude? You know, and I've only understood you from your public persona, um, what it is that you put out there. Um, as much as this is a pretty much a public engagement, I think mm. it's, it's something that needs to be showcased to say, we don't know each other. We're having this conversation and we're willing to, well, I'm willing to, to put this together and build something. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Surely, though, this isn't about me because if you want to have a conversation with me, you could have just called me or could have had the conversation, right? Sure. I'm assuming this is about your presidential bid. No, that's your assumption. Um, I think... Because you are running, right? You did throw your hat in the ring. I've, I've, I've spoken about being involved mm. in, in politics. I've spoken about being able to make a difference because I believe I can. Um, you know, people want to pin it down to a presidential campaign. That's fine. I'll take it. Um, if that opportunity arises, as I've always said, I'll grab it with both hands. But this is deeper than just politics. Um, politics is just one f- facet of what it is that we're trying to do. Um, South Africa is just one area that we need to pull together. There's still an African continent. There's still a, a, a global village that we need to pull together. So, us having these conversations out in the open, um, yes, of course, it's opportune from my side. Don't get me wrong. I'm on, a, I'm on your platform, and I appreciate you for having me on your platform. Um, it's, it's about just raising the bar. That's as simple as it is. Okay, so we're going to need to go to traffic quickly. So explicitly, what is it that you're hoping to achieve? Because I still haven't heard you say it. Right. I hear you say you need to unite, raise the bar, pull together. But for what exactly? Um... We've got a country to build. It's as simple as that. Um, when I sit, uh, I, I take a look around. I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone standing up and saying, "Yo, let's let's take this fight forward." A lot of people are talking. Um, it's all good, but I'm saying, you know, I'm I'm, I'm willing to stand up um, and let's let's raise the bar. So when I say, or when you make the assumption that it's about a presidency, it's less of that. It's more of saying, guys, if we can do it. We're sitting in the studio, people are doing what it is that they do, but you are at the pinnacle of what it is that you do. If we've been able to do it with the little that we've had, the little support that we've had, uh, we've been able to break through into these different industries and to have this voice. Uh, I'm going to use it. You know, um, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Okay.
Well, thank you for that. Just hold it right there. Cool. Uh, because when we come back, we'll carry on with the discussion. You can still hit us up right now uh, to designer Zoomers in the studio. So welcome back. Uh, this is Car Drive, a very special edition of Car Drive. Uh, less music and kind of more talk because we've got a guest in studio to designer Zoomers here with us. Before we took the ad break, uh, you spoke about us having a country to build, right? If somebody were to say you were possibly in the most prime position to help build the country because your father was a president. Uh, and I can imagine you would have had a lot of influence on your father, ergo the president. Why didn't you take the opportunity then to build the country? No, I think that, that statement is completely um, incorrect. The reason I say that is he's, he's a politician. He was doing his politics thing. I've, I've followed a business career mm-hmm. um, my whole life and he's his own man. You know, you know, there's nothing I can whisper in his ear like, yo, what's good, man? He'll be Not like, even yo. at all. I mean, because I can tell you right now, yeah. as much as my father's my own, he's his own man, yeah. he will, I'll have his ear. I'm um, Not to say that he's going to do everything that I say, but I'll definitely have his ear. And by you just being his son, you do have an influence. Maybe you're not influence over him, but definitely general influence. Would you agree with that? Uh, now I do. And to answer your question in another way, um, the business journey that I've taken and the levels that I reached mm-hmm. at the time. I think uh, for a young business person in this country, second to none. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we played at the highest levels. I played at the highest levels. Um, I've sat around some interesting tables, negotiating tables, boardrooms, conferences, whatever it is. Um, and the difference that I made at the time was purely on a commercial basis. That would be from pushing the game further as a young black business person. That would be from an employment perspective, employing people, um, getting communities going, building up communities, um, getting the healthcare around those communities going, going the schools around the communities, um, and just pushing the boundary and showing people that it can be done. Because when we look at look at it from the outside as 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 younger players in business, we we're inspired by different people. We look up to people to say, okay, if I was in that position, what would I have done? So from my side, I think I did play a role, and mm-hmm. I think that's why. Um, this um, this level of conversation has had this level of um, profile of whatever it is that's going on is there purely on those steps that I took from a business perspective. On the political side, I mean, Du was running his own. He was running his own thing. And yes, um, I completely agree. There are definitely some benefits of um, being associated with someone that is a head of state at the time. But at the same time, there are some massive drawbacks. Um, you know, I always, I always say this, you know, it's, it's, it's a gift and a curse being in a position like that because as much as people say, okay, here's this guy, whatever it is that they, 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 they think that I am, um, needs no introduction, um, he's doing A, B, C, and D, the level of scrutiny is 10 times more than you or anyone else would have. Why? Because of governance. What is this guy doing? How has he gotten involved? What are the relationships? Um, what networks is he using to, to leverage to get these opportunities? And, that, and largely that's been the discussion around um, the issues I've had from a, a legal perspective is how did you guys do this? It's impossible to have done it without influence. So from my side, and, and I've said this on multiple platforms, I've said this at the commission um, in, in other interviews is I've chosen my path and my path was purely private. It was not, it was not government related. Now this is a different story. So what, okay, there's two things now, all right? Because you brought up business and we're going to delve into that later. Yeah. But what, led to the sudden change of heart. If you say you were driven by self-interest initially, yeah. why now do you suddenly want to go a different route? Because if you're a business person, carry on doing business. Right, so I think it's, it's, um, that's been determined by multiple things. Uh, one is that journey wasn't easy. And that journey that I've gone is not new to, to a young business person mm-hmm. um, in this country. So there's places where We've been, there's places, there's, I've, 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 I've taken a look behind the curtain. Um, I've seen how certain things work. Um, I've had the pleasure of, of meeting all sorts of, of, of high profile people who've, who've schooled me in, in, in the game of business. So what has driven me to this point is taking... Is this subsequent to your father leaving office? No, most definitely not. This okay. is subsequent to my own experiences as okay. a business person. He was always going to leave office. Okay. You know, um, he's, he's an old man, you know. It, it was always going to happen. Um, age-wise, retirement, and politically-wise, two terms, constitutional, blah, blah, blah. That's just what it is. So that was, that was never the issue. From my side, it's my experiences, and I always find it 
interesting because people have this one view on the other side they don't know what we have what we've been doing to, in, in the background on our grind historically mm. what it's taken for us to to get to this point um as a matter of fact us sitting at this point i'm not supposed to be sitting here having this conversation with you i'm supposed to be sitting in an in, in orange overall somewhere in the correctional services system you know people forget that um you know there's there's there's, there's times where people say ah oh, but why you and i'm saying why not me i've gone through it i've lived it i'm sitting at a point now where I've seen the, the, the inner workings, the machinations and it, that, that, that um, are involved in the private sector, the way business is done. And yes, I've seen how, how people have done government business and have, have made themselves fabulously wealthy. Good for them. That is not me. So I'm sitting in the middle. Sorry, just, I'm sitting in the middle and I'm saying there's this level of information. There's this level of experience that I feel I can impart. I feel I can make a difference with what I've learned moving forward. Okay. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. Now, to the second thing, the business side, right? Yes. If somebody were to say, and you also brought up something else just now where you said you should be in orange overalls. If somebody were to say, why aren't you in, over, in orange overalls? And perhaps the reason why you're not, and part of the reason why you're even so largely successful in business was because of that undue prominence that you enjoyed. What do you say to that? All right. So undue prominence, once again, I'll have to humbly disagree with you on that one. Um, because if, if you look at the history of my, my business career, the, and we're speaking about just within a, a certain time time period. The last three four years have been the most critical because that's mm-hmm. when it really got hot in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, there's been times where things have popped up as far back as um, 2009, 2010, and we we're just doing our own thing then. And it got to a point now where it was ramped up. Now, the undue influence is an unfair statement because I haven't wielded influence on anybody. There's no one that can come and sit in this room and say, hey, this guy was, he, 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 put, he put pressure on me, dog. What, they will, what people will say is, we've worked with this guy and this guy's put us on. That's what they will say because that's, that's, that's what I've done. Why is it unfair? And maybe let me elaborate. You've been in business for a long time, as early as 2005, I think, yeah, from what there, I yes. could tell. Correct. But your best years in business were from 2009 onwards. Coincidentally, which was when your father was in office, right? Furthermore, when you say it's unfair, um, do you believe in favoritism? Favoritism does exist. I mean, we all, yeah, favoritism. Yeah, but does. do you, but do you believe in it? Is it a good thing to have? Because it definitely exists. One hundred percent, I agree with you. In some cases, yeah, there's nothing wrong with favoring people, favoring teams, favoring a situation. We all do it, one hundred percent. Okay, so if you say we've got to fix a country. Mm. One of the biggest issues that we faced with as a country is inequality. Yeah. And inequality uh, comes as a result of many things, but favoritism certainly does perpetuate it. Do you agree or disagree? Favoritism in what sense? In, well, the, in, inequali- in, in the inequality. So in any in sense, sense, nepotism could be one. Uh, so, you know, those who are hoarding wealth tend to do business amongst okay. themselves. Uh, and, they exclude, and they exclude a lot of people that could be partaking in the economy. Correct. I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose... Within the context of this discussion, the best way to fix a country, well, there's a lot of ways, but one way that you could look at it is if you go, we need a meritocracy where people are given positions or given access to opportunities based on merit. Sure. Would you agree with that as well? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Now, if I tell you that there's somebody out there who's perhaps more deserving than you are, who's perhaps less connected, though, than you are, uh, and let's use any other merits to gauge people, let's say aptitude, etc., and so on, better educated, whatever but that person didn't get the opportunity that you got and didn't get to enrich themselves as you did, what would you say to that? I'd say to that, I've been, I've been, I've been dealt different cards to everyone else. I've had my ups, I've had my downs. I've been under pressure um, in my life for, for certain things. I'd like that same approach when people say, hey, you've been favoured when the chips are down. Mm. No one was around, no one was saying, you know, and that's why I keep saying the, over, the, the orange overalls thing because people conveniently forget that the pressure was on. Whether it was true, false, right, wrong, that's a different story, but I've walked through that when people thought that I'd run away from it. So if people are going to throw that, that, that label and say, look, you were favoured, um, you know, there's, there's a flip side to that coin. Uh, that's that's just, just the way I see it. But there's a flip side to every coin and that's life. That's why it's called sure. the trade-off, right? Correct. So for example, when I chose to be the person that I am and be in the public eye, the drawback to that is that I forfeit any kind of private life. Right, uh, I'm a very private person. I'd very much like to be able to go somewhere and not have people want to take photos with me. But I then go, you know what? 
I also like the way my life has turned out because there's also a lot of benefit that comes with being me. Um, so I take the good with the bad. I can't sit here and complain about the sure. bad now because when the when the good comes, I revel in it. So why do you complain about the bad that comes with it? Especially if somebody were to say that heat in the kitchen that you speak of was largely brought about, brought about by... Let's say your own actions, according to the allegations. All right, so from my side, we're definitely on the same page. I think maybe you misunderstood me. Mm. Um, when I was saying, when I was speaking about the pressures, I was mm. just saying, I was agreeing with the point that the good and the bad is something that I, that's how I live. Um, the path, that's a path that's been chosen. That's not, that's not up for me. You know, if, 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 if a person is feeling that way, there's nothing I can say to anybody. All I can say to them is, Get up on your feet and then and, and try it out. That's what I did. It's as simple as that. So when people when people try and, and, and just say, you know, there was a red carpet that was laid out for you, that's definitely not the case. We work hard. Um, we get up as early as everyone else. We sleep later than everyone else. We put in the, we put in the work. That's just what it is. So somebody who may say to you, they don't consider you to be a legitimate business person, yeah. uh, that you literally just enriched yourself from government tenders, etc. What do you say to that? That's their view. They're entitled to their view. But do you see how that can then affect how people view you, uh, especially if you want them to suddenly come together and coalesce towards a common goal? Because another thing about leadership is people need to trust you, sure. right? Uh, and that trust speaks to the motive. I need to know what motivates you to suddenly start speaking this way and thinking this way. Uh, right. Another person may go, well... Now, maybe you seeing that there's no other avenue to explore. And so you're thinking, well, the only way I can get back within, I guess, the inner circles of power, etc., is to use the social influence that I have. Because I'll admit, you do have a social influence. A lot of people flock to you. You've seen the numbers. People like you, generally speaking, right? But I'd argue again that since your father has left office, the only thing that's missing now is a formal influence, right? So a formal kind of power. Uh, in which you could use to, I don't know, further your means, et cetera, and so on. And so this could be a way, if you do end up getting back into politics, this could be a way to formalize your influence again. I see I see your point. But um, if we take it back to five years ago, mm. um, yeah, five years ago, I left the country. Mm. I've been living in uh, the United Arab Emirates for the past five years. It wasn't by choice. It was by circumstance, right? There are a few things that led to me having to leave. I didn't, know, I didn't want to leave. Um, I, I love South Africa like everyone else does. I believe in South Africa. And if that wasn't the case at the time, I'd still be here plying my trade. But the first thing that happened, and it's, 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 a lot of it is public, is because of our perceived business dealings, um, there were certain trigger effects that it, um, that it, um, it, 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 it triggered off. Your accounts were shut down. You weren't able to transact electronically. All that, yeah, all that sort of stuff. So... I was once um, expected to survive under those conditions. As a matter of fact, as I'm sitting here, I mean, there's banks around in the system here. We can walk together. For me to open an account, impossible. Mm. All right, what did they tell me? Politically exposed. They reserve their right. That's it. And I'm saying, how? There's people that I know that are sitting, who've been sitting in prison for many years. Their debits are going off. They're supporting their families. I mean, these are guys that have been found guilty of all sorts of crimes. Now, I'm sitting here saying, but... Why am I in this position? And it's not a complaint. I'm just trying to, 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 to shine a spotlight on me having been living outside the country for five years. Mm. Right? I didn't have to come back. I didn't have to formalize anything. I've been minding my own business. I took the pressure that I took. I took it on the chin, if I may say so myself. And I'll continue taking that pressure. Now, for me coming back, it's not like I'm here trying to be a superhero. I'm here to save the day. That's not me. It's not. But I'm saying there are things that need to be done. Because me coming back means a few things. One, exactly what you're saying. I'm being a private person. No one has known me um, up until um, uh, the recent few years. Now, there's many places that I can't go without, you know, the finger pointing for whatever reason. And I'll take it. Criticism and the love. You know, it's, it's all bundled in one. The second thing is coming back to South Africa and having these discussions and, and, and having these aspirations to say, no, we believe we can play at a high level. We understand the risks that that comes with. I'm not coming in waltzing and thinking it's going to be a walk in the park. You know that you know the situation as as as, as deep down as as um, the, the grassroots all the way up. It's a treacherous game. So okay. I, the, the, the risks are there. So I'm not just walking around thinking, oh, 
I'm, I'm here, I've arrived, I'm going to get this done. I understand the risks. I'm willing to put myself in that risk. I don't have to put myself in that risk. I don't have to come back. To formalize power or influence, or whatever it is, I don't have to do that. I'm living a decent life, a good life outside, and that's what it is. So we'll speak about that the next hour. Uh, we join the studio by Tudzana Zuma, as you can hear. Uh, there's lots to discuss, so you can send us your questions as well. Uh, if you want to email them to us, drive at kfm.co.za. I know you say that you keep up with some conversations on Twitter, but there's a Tudzana Zuma account, and you have said that's not you. So how do you do that if you're not on social media? I got homies, dog. <laughs> oh, okay. So you've got a burner account? No, 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 no. I've got no burner accounts for any. I'm So Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it. Uh, Facebook, I do not exist. Um, I'm not on any social media platforms. But there's some things that obviously become newsworthy that are that, that stem off social media. Um, once that happens, the internet is a, is a weird and wonderful place. But otherwise, there are people that are on, on, on social media and they send me stuff that they believe is interesting to me or relevant and that's how I catch up with So basically, any account that people may think that they uh, are kind of interacting with, thinking it's you, is a false account? Completely. I'm not fake accounts, I should fake, say. Fake, um, parody. I'm not on social media at all in any shape, way, form. I don't exist yet. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's speak about your judgment as a person. Uh, and I'll extrapolate examples. I'll speak about, for example, your association with the Guptas, right? <laughs> uh if you were to gauge it on a scale of one to ten, how would you gauge your judgment? Are you a person of sound judgment? Okay, so do you make good decisions in life, or do I, you think I, not? I, I definitely do. I've made my mistakes in life. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you say judgment, uh, was it was it judgment of of what in this case? Uh, just the kind of decisions that you make, the people you choose to, I guess, associate with. Yeah. Uh, because again, if it goes back to what you were saying, which is people need to come together yeah. and work towards this common goal, I need to know the person that I'm dealing with. Sure. Generally, I only associate with like-minded people. And to gauge whether or not I'm like-minded with this person, I'd like to see how their mind works. Sure. I, I, I believe I'm a, I'm a very good judge of character. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're asking specifically, um, I'm not sure what the specific question is about. Is uh, Sorry, is... Um, uh, relating to to the Kuptas, but we walked our journey. Mm-hmm. Um, we we had a very strong bond. We had a very good relationship, and the judgment that I made was a judgment that I stand by to this day. Okay, uh, does that mean you've got no regrets about it? I have absolutely no regrets. We 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 meet people. We we collaborate with people. We socialize with people. Um, it's never it's never um, uh, a straight down the middle engagement you know life okay. you know it, it goes left and right and you learn to work with work around it and i think this is this is the beauty of engaging with people you know we as much as some of us may be like-minded we are not the same person you know so it gives us the opportunity to just be flexible okay i don't know them i've never met them but based on the evidence i've heard <laughs> being led in the state capture inquiry based on the accounts of people who have met them, if those accounts are to be believed, those guys, to me, are highly corrupt. Uh, people then go and talk about the, everything that's wrong with the country. That's also not it. That's, I, I wouldn't say it's that. Uh, because they're also not the only corrupt people in the country. I can concede to that. But those people, specifically, for me, how they did business and how they utilized their relationships, uh, they did in a corrupt manner. Uh, And then I suppose your association with them would then cast a shadow or a cloud over you as an individual as well, because there have also been allegations about you. And if those are to be believed, then you also would have been involved in corrupt activities. What do you say about that? This is what I've said previously on on multiple accounts, and I'll say it now. Mm. Um, A partnership is a partnership commercial relations we did what we did within the business context there have been allegations and yes I've been um, accused of all sorts of interesting things and my thing is very simple it's easy to accuse it's easy to point a finger and say this guy did this or this guy's about this human interaction um, human feedback is, is a different story so like I said if you bring anybody to the studio to any platform and I can only speak for myself. How people 
engage with other people, how people feel they've been rubbed off, that's beyond my control. All I can do is say, you know, sees where this guy's feeling disrespected because you didn't greet him, whatever. And for you, if you don't want to greet him, you don't want to greet him. That's up to you, you know. Or, or you give him the warm and fuzzy and he's feeling that you're showing too much love, you know, uh, you know, this guy's too much. That's the way that person feels about it. But that's for you to, to engage the person. That's for you to... Uh, you decide how, how you, you champion your, um, your, your um, um, engagement with people. So from my side, I can only speak for myself because I know how... I meet people, I know how I treat people, I know how people treat me, and I can only speak of that from my own account. And then when it comes to the allegations, I don't know how many times I need to, to defend myself. And, you know, it's, it's, it's getting to a point where I've been taken to court on, on numerous occasions. And I've said the exact same thing, guys. If there's a case to answer, let's go. Till today, nothing. To a point where the arrest that you spoke about earlier on was based on, on, on false charges. That's just a fact. Now, if people are believing that in the sense of false information was put out there, um, propaganda was put out there, and this is what's driven us to a point where that's the way people see me, it's unfortunate because that's not the case. Otherwise, I'd be in a different situation than, um, at this moment. And I've never run away from it. I've, I've, I've approached it. We joined in the studio by Duduzane Duma. I'm Zuma, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Also, while you're on that, is it Duduzani or Duduzane? Duduzani. Ah, okay. Yeah. To design a Zoom. Yeah. Uh, if you got any questions, you can hit us up, 0860000959. And if you want to send us a WhatsApp voice note, 063-688-0959. So welcome back. This is Kaya Drive. Uh, join the studio by to design a Zoom. Uh, and before the ad break, you were speaking about your relationship with the Guptas. You spoke about how we should interrogate what it is that we think we know uh, in order to ascertain what it is that we then ultimately believe, right? Unfortunately, I've never met them. And I can't even get access to them now because they've left the country and they've never come back since. You, however, are our guest today. And again, before the break, you spoke about how even the charges that had been laid against you were then withdrawn. One thing I will say, though, is that the absence of evidence is not necessarily the evidence of innocence, right? Sometimes people know things, but they just can't prove those things. Now, I've been in situations like that. So... <laughs> Can you then tell us that just because you are not charged or just because these are just allegations and the onus is on those who accuse, of course, to prove those, uh, can you then tell us that because of that and because nothing has emanated yet that you are now innocent? 100% innocent. Um, I appreciate what you're saying, but if we just take it back to how we get to this point of guilty or innocent, or innocent um, there needs to be a track record, there needs to be evidence that's put forward before we get there. Mm. You can't just come to me and accuse me of all sorts of stuff and I need to explain myself. The, the, you know, the, the burden of, of proof is on the accuser. Mm. You know, I'm not here to just volunteer um, anything about myself. If you're saying I've done something wrong, um, I've done something untoward, prove it. Whatever it is, footage, paperwork, um, fingerprints, whatever it is that people. So if you look at the charge sheets that um, I've been slapped with historically, it's been it's basically everything from a financial aspect, um, financial crimes aspect. It's fraud, it's corruption, it's money laundering, it's racketeering, mm. it's bribery. Um, fine. These are, the, these are not, these are not um, you know, Mickey Mouse charges. These, these are serious charges. Mm. And, you know, there's a very competent um, Hawks Division, um, Special Investigations Unit Division, um, the investigative arm within SAP, South African Police. Um, there's intelligence that exists out there that um, both from police intelligence to um, just on the NIA, the National Intelligence Agency. So if you are speaking about these crimes of state capture and, and, you know, these huge numbers that you're talking about, you need to know your story. You can't just come and say, no, nah, we believe you've done this, so it's probably true. And the reason I say this is whenever there are financial crimes that exist, there's a track record, there's paperwork, there's bank statements, there's um, audits, um, maybe things that look untoward within, within the, the audits and... None of that has, has uh, from, and I, once again, I speak for myself because I can only speak about my activities. There's been none of that. So now, if I'm being accused of these various charges and nothing has come to the fore, now remember this is now 2021, we are five years into it. There's been a whole host of investigations. There's been um, um, parliament has run an inquiry. There's been um, collaboration with international law enforcement and all sorts of things. And I'm sitting here, I'm having this conversation. It's not like they don't know where to find me. I didn't run away. I had to leave. 
I'm here. Let's have a conversation, guys. You know, wherever, wherever you're at, whatever it is, let me help you. So I'm glad you bring up the state-owned agencies um, because, again, if the testimonies and the evidence is to be believed, and I, I'll use the term evidence loosely because it's really hearsay until we've seen anything concrete, sure. but those were infiltrated by the previous administration headed up by your father. I don't need to tell you. And so if you were to believe that, then you could see why there would be an influence so as to not to get it to a point where you perhaps get charged or end up in jail. Infiltrated in what way? This is what I still struggle to understand. Today. Well, I mean, if you are the president, uh, you are the leader of the executive. Yes. Uh, essentially, majority of those people report to you, albeit not directly. But if you are in a position where you can then appoint ministers and the people that report to your ministers, those ministers end up having an allegiance to you and they report directly to you, you can see how you could have an influence on the head of the Hawks, for example, right? Uh, we've read reports of people within the NIA using state resources to spy on uh, opposition members, even within the party. Uh, so that's the kind of infiltration okay. I'm talking about. Got you. So if we're going to speak about that infiltration at that level, then we need to take it back to the history of the existence of the South African government. That's just what we've got to do. And one of the questions that I, uh, well, one of the points I raised to um, uh, the Deputy Judge President uh, Zondo mm. is... Let me ask you, just hold on right there because we're going to be late for news. Okay. Hold that okay. thought, but remember it very quickly. Uh, Mr. Zuma... Back to you, sir. So you had a point to make uh, before we went to sport and then took a song. Do you remember what that point was? Uh, yes, I do, Mr. Jomo. Okay. Um, so I was speaking about the chairman of the commission mm. um, and the point that I'd raised then. Because we're, where we're at, I think a lot of, and there's a lot of underlying factors that lead to the situation we find ourselves in. Mm. And unfortunately, there are issues of of corruption that exists and mm. they need to be dealt with however and whenever, mm. 100%. And no one should be spared um, that um, 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 spared that 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 space to, to escape from, you know, delivering the bad guys to, to, to prison or to um, repatriate or to repay, whatever it is. Mm. The reason I'm saying that is I'd raised to, to the chairman of the commission and I said, look, the interesting thing is we're speaking of corruption in the space of, what was it, this administ well, the previous administration. Mm. Nine so years. nine years, yeah. Cool. And that's fine. As a matter of fact, they could have taken it to corruption within the space of one year. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to deal with corruption, it cannot be spotlighted in one corner. And that's the issue that I have with it, is if you're going to put us to scrutiny, you're more than welcome to. You have. Mm. You know, we've, we've been under that scrutiny. But it needs to be opened up. If you want to deal with corruption and, 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 and real corruption, you need to open it up and you need to deal with it emphatically. And that means completely. Now, the problem with that line mm. of thinking is that it sounds more like a concession to me. And I'll tell you why. I'm listening. Right, so to give you an example, uh, around 58 million people, sorry, 58 people get murdered in South Africa yep. every day, right? If I go and I murder a person and I get caught murdering this person, for me to turn around and go, there's 57 other guys you didn't catch. is not a defense. I got caught. I must deal with what's going on. It's not to say that nobody else got murdered. Sure. But here is what we're dealing with. Correct. So that's why, for me, I've got an issue with that. Not It, it's, it shouldn't be an issue because it's, it's definitely not a concession because I have been taken down that journey. So it's, it's a fact. Um, I've been through that scrutiny and I'm sitting here. So it's not something where I'm trying to point in, in a different direction of... I've lived it. Mm. I've experienced it. I'm speaking from experience to say, you know what? It started with me. But if, been, if indeed there was corruption, yeah. you have faced no consequence of it. Because I'm not corrupt and I've done nothing wrong and I can speak openly and honestly about it. How people wish it for me to be in that position where I'm found to be corrupt is beyond my control. Because I'm not in that position, shouldn't be a situation where people say, ah, you know, it's deflecting or it's a concession. It's not a concession. I've been accused of it. Cool. Prove it. Okay. Tell us about politics. Uh, I've seen videos, and I suppose it's very difficult because sometimes you do speak in circles. But strictly speaking, maybe can you tell us, are you getting into politics? I am in the middle of politics. Yeah. 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 Um, 
the reason the reason I'm saying that is okay to answer your question directly. What I'm saying I'm I'm in the middle of it is it's a decision that I've taken for various reasons, mm. um, and I think we we're sitting in a in a in a space in our country where you know there's there's a very desperate a desperate environment mm. um, that that exists, and we we're trying to take it away from the politics of desperation to the politics of inspiration, and 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 why that is so is. If we take a look around, we see what's happening within our parliament, um, the level of engagement, um, the decisions that are being taken that are supposed to benefit um, the majority, which are the, the poor, uh, black, and then in a specific case, are not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at the decisions that are being taken, they're actually quite favorable to maintaining the status quo. And that was a, a, a tail end point that I was going to make when I spoken about the corruption element. Um, you know, people don't speak about, and you know, I'm not trying to point fingers, but I'm saying, if we're going to have this discussion, we need to open it up and deal with it. You mm-hmm. know, you have cases that exist of companies, of individuals being found wanting. Some of them are locked up, others are not. Competition Commission, every other month, they, 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 they're publishing um, companies that have been found guilty of collusion. Mm-hmm. Not they've been suspected of, they're still guilty, and they pay fines. And we're talking about multi-billions. And these are the, the top, some of them um, JSC listed companies. And my thing is like, okay, cool. How is it fine for them to walk away with it with a fine, and it's not fine for the next person to to walk away um, from that situation with a fine? So, if we're going to deal with corruption, let's deal with it wholeheartedly and not spare anyone any any blushes. And that is a problem that's happening. I don't believe that we are serious about dealing with corruption because we are highlighting it and we are politicizing it. This is the issue I have with it, and you know, not on a concession basis, but just from the way I've experienced it. So, then, how would you recommend we deal with it? We, we we turn over everything. If we're going to talk about corruption, we start off. I mean, if look for example, look at the public protector, mm. um, Musi Kwebane. Mm. Um, what situation is she in now? She faces losing her job because she was doing her job, <laughs> and you know she was clearly um, you know turning over the wrong uh, the wrong tables, and that's that's why she got into trouble. Because if she's seen to be investigating a certain um, type of person or a certain per- a person that seemed to be favorable to a certain grouping, it's fine. But when you go into issues of investigating the real issues, I mean, if you look at where, you know, and, and you're just watching the, the State Capture Commission now and the president is on there and he's, mm. he's making some interesting concessions, you know, which um, I would disagree with because if you look at where the ruling party has come from, mm. from 94 to where it is now, they were put in a very tight position. They effectively inherited a bankrupt um, fiscus. Mm. Yeah. And for them to still be relevant today, never mind there's issues that need to be fixed, uh, 100%, is an admirable thing. Why? Because they've done it with the little that they've had, which, which is a, a vote of, of confidence in the government that's, that's existed. Do things need to change now? 100%. And that's how we're having these conversations because we find ourselves looking at our elders who've brought us here from the politics of liberation and freedom in, in 1994 when it was tough you know getting chased by German shepherds and being waterboarded and stuff it was difficult to be in, in, in that position fighting fighting the fight to a point now where it should be a whole lot easier because you're not faced with these, those issues but we're not advancing the battle you know we've gone from the politics of, 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 of liberation and freedom to the politics of race uh, you know as much as there was a North Star everyone's facing this Rainbow Nation um, society, uh, those are complete farce, clearly. We can't have issues of, 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 of um, racism, you know, okay. in, in our society and even the way that it pans out in our, our economy. So I definitely hear that. Uh, and maybe let me make a couple of concessions of my own now, because I agree with you and you say not everything is dealt with in the same manner in the world, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, so let's start off with justice. Lady Justice herself is blind, but I like to say her chaperone isn't. And uh, so what I mean by that is the legal practitioners, right? They are human too. Sure. They exist with flaws. And so they've got their own biases. It should not infiltrate the judiciary. It should not get to a point where people get ill-treated uh, as opposed to others getting well-treated. But there definitely is a bias and I'm sure anybody can tell you that some people have better access to the law than others. That's a fact of life. Yes. We'll then move on and speak about, uh, what else did you mention? Generally speaking, just 
everything about life, even media. People speak about how media is biased. I've said on the show numerous times, media is biased. Again, because media practitioners are human beings. Uh, and so anybody that sits here and tells you that no media is biased, that person is either lying to you or they haven't thought it through. Sure. Right? But what we need to consider is we need to then aggregate the information that we consume and we need to be discerning enough to go, okay, here's what I believe to be the truth based on probability the evidence, right? Yeah. And so if lots of people have come out and said one thing about Tutuzana Zuma, I may not have known Tutuzana Zuma, but I've then got to ask myself, hmm, why would these people say this? Sure. Now, I've heard what you have to say on record in terms of defense. You go, there's three things. There's politics at play here, right? Which I 100% agree with you. Sometimes it is that. You speak about media, which is PR. I 100% agree with you as well. And then you speak about the law, right? Yeah. So politics, let's put aside for now and just speak about media and PR versus the law. Those two things don't work hand in hand. In fact, they work against each other. When you're saying, you're talking about um, the, the media and... Yeah, so PR and law. Okay, so, so you're talking about on yeah, the, okay, the exactly. two versus the one. Okay, yeah, so you. I'll give you an example maybe to okay. illustrate. Let's say I went and I killed somebody, right? My lawyer would advise me to keep quiet. Don't, don't make a statement. The first time they must hear from me must be at the bail hearing. My lawyer does this because he or she is only interested in keeping me out of jail. That's it. However, if I don't say anything until my bail hearing, then people will start saying, ah, sees the tweets every day. Why has he said nothing? The fact that he said nothing must mean that he's guilty, right? Sure. And so then your PR person will go, no, we need to get ahead of the story. Let's put out a statement. Already, by you doing that, you jeopardize your own legal case, right? So very often those two things don't work hand yeah, in hand. Right of silence. And I can understand when you say that you feel like you've been prejudiced because of the media coverage that you've received. I wouldn't dispute that. Having said that, though, surely you can understand when I say, based on what it is that I've seen and read, it's very difficult for me to assume your innocence, which is the right of yours. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for specifying it. I think that's a lot clearer. I think from my side, my I made a decision a long time ago when it came to media reports, especially, well, specifically the, the negative reports to, well, and positive. Good and bad, that's the way I've taken it. Pinch of salt. And the reason I'm saying this is my concern is my livelihood, my my rights, you know, my my, my rights that should exist, and they don't, constitutionally speaking. Now, what people say on social media, journalists being biased, um, propaganda, um, whether they, they, they write the truth or not, that's, that's not my concern. People are going to say, people are entitled to their opinions. They're, they're entitled to, 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 to view what they need to view. Um, unfortunately, there are times where a lot of them get it wrong because they do not fact check. Um, and it's just as they, what they call a microwave, microwave journalism, where just people will just pick up um, a source and they won't verify it and they, they, they continue with, with that trail. Now, my, my main issue is on the judiciary side because that's where I feel it's been, I've been prejudiced by, by the judiciary. Like I said, till today, I don't know why I was arrested. No one has told me and no one is going to tell me. How am I supposed to feel about that? Because now I'm sitting in a position where I'm like, yo, I'm going to need an opportunity to prove my innocence and I haven't been given that opportunity because that was never the case. It wasn't about that. Um, and this is this is the, this is this is the problem I, I have. For example, to the, the bias of, of the media, there's a judgment. I forget which judgment it was, and that's when I realized, look, we need to we need to look a bit more deeply into this. And it was maybe 28, 2019. Mm. Yeah, um, I'll I'll remember the judgment as we move along. But the judge at that time, in his judgment, mm -hmm. wrote and. Um, I think there's, there was actually some commentary around it in social media by some of the opposition party members as well, where he stated that exactly what you're saying. If this is out in the public domain, mm -hmm. if this is out in the media, if I'm reading this in the newspaper, then I need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And I'll take that as um, you know um, verified. And that is something that I'll base my judgment on. Because if people, exactly what you're saying, if people are saying this and if this um, narrative is being drummed left, right and centre, day in, day out, then it must be true. 
now that boils down to 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 what you said earlier on about you know everyone is you know is a human being whether it's a journalist whether it's a judge everyone's got their views you know judges when they go and vote they vote for a specific party we don't know but they've got their preference you mm. know um and that's that's cool there's nothing wrong with that but it becomes a problem when you're sitting in that chair and it's our lives on the line and you make a decision based on how you feel about the uh, the situation whether it be emotionally um or politically or sometimes even religiously mm. <laughs> it's a, that's a problem and that's that's basically where where I'm coming from and, and the prejudice to me I I I I take exception um to that the media the media is going to do what they need to do so you mentioned that you didn't know why you were arrested my understanding of that was the DA went to open up a case in Rosebank yes. a police station in Rosebank based on evidence that had been presented by Mkwezi Jonas. Uh, and then, you know, again, based on uh, the Prevention and, and Combating of Corruption Act of 2004, I think, right? Yeah. Because if indeed you were bribing Mkwezi Jonas uh, to become the next finance minister, that would have been corruption and bribery would have been there as well. You've been witness to it. And so once they opened that case, at the time, I think you had already left the country. Is that correct? Um... I think you I'm were in Dubai. Sure. You were living in Dubai it's, at the time. It's, it's possible. I'm not yeah. sure. I'll have to think. Yeah. So because you're living in Dubai... No, no, no. no. no not you true. Weren't. I was here. I was here. Okay. Yeah, I was here. So then why did they not come and arrest you then? Why did they only arrest you when you came back from Dubai? That's an interesting question. I don't have the answer to that. Um, secondly, because the law, the law is the law. Mm. Um, you have two sides to the law. You have the accuser and you have the accused. Mm. At this point, no one is speaking, out. No one is speaking about the, the person that made the accusation. You know, he did what he needed to do. Good luck to him. Have a nice life. But I'm sitting here saying, I'm you know being asked all these questions. I'm saying, if it comes to the same acts that that exist, the poker, the paka, the whichever other acts that exist, um, is I think there's preka as well. There's all all these fancy mm. um, legal jargon terms. Um, he had a window of opportunity to report it as a, a public officer. When you say he, who are you I'm talking, talking about? about? We're talking about... Um, so yes, correct. Okay, yes, okay. Because yeah. he's not the one that opened the case. It was a DA that opened the case. Yeah, but... But, but then they needed him as a complainant because correct. obviously he is the evidence bearer. Correct, but he, he made that accusation and he was a complainant. Whether mm. he went to the police station or not, that complaint was... It was it was there in effect. Mm. Um, so there's certain... Um, prerequisites as an as a, an, a public office or public official, should I say, public mm. office bearer, that if you are making these certain, if if, if something on toward like a bribe or um, you spoke, uh, you duty bound to report yeah, duty it. To, why didn't you report it? Okay, but that's a, that's a, that's now that's an fine. aside no, fact, right? Because no, we're speaking about why we're talking about how why you got arrested, but I'm right? Linking, I'm linking it up. Yeah, that's that's the one thing because that's important because I mean it's not it's not in isolation. That's a very important point which mm. I'll link in the end. Secondly, the DA goes to. Rosebank Police uh, Station, and they 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 make the 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 the, the um, they report it to mm. to the, to the authorities that this is the case based on what um, the former Deputy Finance Minister had said. Third thing is, I'm nowhere in the mix. I'm I'm around. I'm traveling. I'm sorting out my life. There was a bounty on my head. There was an online bounty, which was quite an, an interesting thing as well. Mm. Um, if you see this guy. Citizens arrest, you know, mm. uh, which was, you know, it was a, a danger to my life based on these um, these these accusations. Then we move on to a point where I get arrested coming back in, mm. and at um, the, the the customs and immigration, the gentleman he said that exactly. Rosebank Police chase, uh, Station. There's been this Sorry, charge. We just we've got a minute and a half before it gets in use, okay, so let's cool. try and wrap up because I want to. Yeah, cool. I'll do it. Charged. I get arrested. Fast forward. Commission of inquiry. He himself says, "What are you talking about? I did not sign any 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 affidavit. The reason why he's been arrested is not shouldn't be attributed to me because mm-hmm. it's not there. The A1 statement, yes, the accuser, it's it's in court. It wasn't there. How do you explain that? And so then that's why you your case eventually or ultimately ended up getting withdrawn because yes. the DA, even though they opened up a case, they had yeah. no complainants to back up the veracity of those. No claims. complaint and no evidence until this day. It has now. I must sit with that stigma." When it's not true. Okay. You no, know. I just I wanted to get to the bottom of that because yeah. at least now we have an understanding as Correct. to why it is that you got arrested. Correct. Uh, and again, if you understand the Criminal Procedure Act and just criminal procedure as a whole, I can go and report the case. Yeah. Once I report the case, the investigating officer will open up a docket based on what it is that I've said, right? Yeah. There'll be an affidavit because sure. I say it under oath. 
After that, they'll investigate whether or not this is correct. They may or may not arrest you because they feel like you're a flight risk, etc. and so on. Sure. They will then hand over the docket once they're done with it and they've got all the evidence to the prosecuting authority, right? The National Prosecuting Authority will then decide at their own discretion whether they want to prosecute or not. Sure. But them choosing not to prosecute doesn't mean that there was a case to begin with. It could just mean that there was no, no evidence it means that it was, led to them wanting to prosecute. No, but then Because it's, it's also at their, at their own discretion. It's, it's one thing if we speak about accusations, one thing once you start having processes and procedures. Now we are legitimizing and structurizing these charges. It's one thing if it's an no, no, yeah, this guy did this. this that's one thing. But now if we are in a situation where South African police have it, the Hawks are investigating, National Prosecuting Authority involved, it's a serious thing on both sides, accused and accused. Mm. So now, by the time the NPA decides, they need to be sure that this is serious. Me being arrested, me showing up in court, and the court, the, 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 sorry, the charge being withdrawn. There was no A1 statement. Procedurally, that should not even make it to that level. Okay. Join the studio by to design Zuma. Uh, as you can hear, you can give us a call. We will now be taking all of your calls in this next hour. 086-00-0959. If you want to send us a WhatsApp voice note, 63 I'd prefer it if maybe you had been listening to the interview before you sent us a question because I don't want you to cover things we've already touched on in the first or second hour. This year is Kaya Drive. If you just joined us in studio, we have got to design a Zuma. Uh, he's been with us pretty much for the last hour and 45 minutes. And uh, we've got some voice notes now that have come through for him. You can send us your voice note to 63 If you want to call us and just speak to him directly, 86 Since I believe you've asked Duzani a number of questions, and um, he is answering, to be fair, but uh, I find his answers to be a little bit more lengthy and a little bit more explanatory and historic, you know, um, and really we don't have 10 hours to do this radio show if we did by all means he can explain as long as he wants uh and that's not necessarily a bad thing because we do need details on some aspects and some factors um but um for me when you say something like we need to pull together and we need to build a country you know what do you mean um if you're starting a political party Tell us, I'm going to be starting a political party soon. Its values are going to be A, B, C. Um, or there's this business that I'm part of or that I'm doing that is um, going to have this incubation process, which will include this, which will develop this and benefit those types of people. You know, like just try to be a little bit more direct and specific with your answers um, so that we can know which direction you are calling us on if you are calling us to a certain direction. So I guess you get the picture there. It did get me thinking uh, along a certain line though, right? So let's just speak about intra-party politics, specifically within the ANC. Uh, And as you say, you are deep within the politics currently in any case. If you were to somehow emerge with the position of leadership, do you understand what that would entail and are you ready for that? I understand exactly what it entails. Uh, I've given it a lot of thought and I'm, I'm good to go. So how are you good to go? Because, you know, having people like you is one thing. And as I've already said earlier on the show, people do like you. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to votes, though. Uh, And we've seen this before where people are enamored by an individual, but it doesn't translate to votes. Having said that, it would be silly of me to sit here uh, knowing that you are the son of perhaps one of the most astute politicians in our country. Uh, and to think that he didn't teach you a thing or two or that he doesn't even advise you in terms of strategy to move along this way, move along that way. So let's speak about, for example, if you needed to whip up votes within the party. A lot of the people that would have been in your faction, so to speak, because there are factions in the ANC, in the ANC, that's a fact. Uh, Those people have either been immobilized somewhat or they find themselves not having the power that they used to wield. So who would you rely on now to get those kind of votes? I think we need to take it a a few steps back. And that Mm. voice note was a very interesting one. And the gentleman's correct. Um, You know, belaboring points is not why we're here, but we're just answering questions that we asked. Mm. Um, I think when it comes to the how, it's a a very simple thing. Like I said, I like keeping things simple. There's there's a lot happening within the political space and, and within our society. 
And what we are doing is we are, we are rising above the petty politics because there's a lot of petty politics. I don't care what anybody says because one of the biggest talking points right now is, you know, we've got our, our stop watches and in, in, I don't know what day we are now, but there was a 30 day step aside rule. Mm. And now we must all be consumed with what's going to happen in 30 days when there's, you know, more serious things going on in, 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 in the world. Um, so when you look at the, the, the intra-party politics, the, the factionalism, the, the favoritism, whatever exists in, 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 in what would be the, the ruling party, that's something that needs to be fixed. Um, and the reason why I believe this is the time for that happening, you know, there's, there's, there's um, what people believe is a crisis in, in South Africa, um, mm-hmm. politically and economically. And the way I see it, I see it as an opportunity. Um, you know, there's the, there, there is no crisis because we were always going to get to this point. It was inevitable. This mm-hmm. is my view. From the way the, 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 the transition happened in 94 politically to the decisions that have been taken to what lead us up to now, to the way South Africa responds to the rest of the world um, in, in its relations with the African Union, its base in SADC, um, the United Nations, G20, the BRICS that was formed. Um, we've had um, COVID that's created a completely new dynamic in the world. Um, where, where we're going to is, is, is an interesting place, and I see this as an opportunity. An opportunity. Okay. After traffic, we will delve deeper into that opportunity that you have now identified. Because I also want to find out if you do it within the governing party or form a new vehicle. Welcome back to Kaya Drive. Uh, Joining the studio by Tutuzani Zuma. Got some voice notes that we need to play. And of course, calls that are queued up all the way to the wazoo. We're hoping that we'll be able to get through all of this in the next, let's call it 18. Well, no, it'll be 38 minutes uh, before the show ends. Uh, but in the meantime, you can send us what it is that you want to ask him right now. 086-0000-959 if you want to call us. Or if you want to send us a WhatsApp voice note, 63 859 Thanks for coming to the show. I have a question for you, Turi Makamat and Rustenberg. Uh, if you are the son of a highly influential person like Ndate Jacob Zuma, tell me something. Did you start your wealth? Because I know now you are a rich guy. Did you start your wealth from scratch by yourself? Or did you use your, your father's political alliances to get to where you are? And if indeed you used your father's political uh, uh, influence... Is that not corruption? Okay, so that's the first question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, you can uh, answer. Yeah, I mean, sure. I can take another call if you want, so then answer them all at once. But I think it's better this if you do. Yeah. Okay, agreed. Um, Mr. Mahamed and Rustenberg, thank you very much for the question, sir. Um, my business career, like I said earlier on, and I'll repeat it now, has been based on doing business. My commercial activity has been private. Uh, if you look at the businesses that I've been involved in, there's been a lot of businesses that have been built from the ground up. They've been, well, there've been some from the ground up and most of them we've acquired. Um, and the reason why I'm saying acquired is there's a popular belief that we were getting these political favors because of political relations um, in the form of favors, um, licenses, um, introductions, whatever. If you look at the business areas that I was a part of. And I speak in the part in, in, in the sense of, of a team because, you know, I worked with partners and, you know, there was, there was management, there were, you know, there's all sorts of prof- professional people who were part of the team who did a wonderful job. Um, you look at the mining space. If you look at the history of, of what uh, mining activities we've been involved in, you will find on the minimal side, mines that we've actually received uh, mining um, licenses from the Department of Minerals um, and Energy at the time, we've had to acquire these mines. So it's been an acquisition that's happened. And that speaks to us not getting those favors of, of, of pushing um, um, people in departments to do so. Why? Because it's not what we do. Mm-hmm. To a matter of, uh, to, to, as a matter of fact, we had a, and yeah, well, we had, a whole backlog of mining applications, mining um, um, permits that we applied for that we did not receive. Backlog, and that was just our case, and that's been the curse that I speak about, where people see our names and they're like, hot potato, we need to make sure all boxes are checked, and whilst the boxes are getting checked, time is running and the opportunity is lost. 
Secondly, we're involved in the media space. If you look at the media space. In the mining bit, though, for, I mean, I'll speak specifically for just uh, OCH, right? Um, yeah, opt- optimum. Um, yeah. You guys acquired that mine and then later on got a contract with ESCOM. Am I correct in saying that? Um, no, you're wrong in saying that. Uh, the reason I'm saying it, that is when we acquired the mine, there were contracts that we inherited from the previous mine owners. Mm-hmm. So these were contracts that were, because the, the mine was actually in, in what they call business rescue. Yeah. Um, so it was under um, administration and uh, that's when we, 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 we bought over the mine. Um, as a matter of fact, we were not the, per- the first preference. Um, mm-hmm. There were a few other suitors that were given the opportunity to, to buy the mine and whatever for whatever reason those deals fell apart. I think we came in like third or fourth down mm-hmm. the line. So we were not first preference. Um, and that speaks to us not having any favorability. Um, okay, but I mean, if you look at the people who were at the helm of ESCOM at the time, yeah. so you're looking at people like Brian Mulefe, you're looking at people like um, uh, Koko, uh, Marcello Koko. These are people that have since now admitted that they had a relationship mm-hmm. with the Gupta family. Yeah. So you can't tell me that that didn't work to your favor? Okay, so if I can ask you a question in response to that is, mm-hmm. if that was the case, why were we one of the few, if not the only company selling our product at the cheapest rate. We're supposed to, where other guys were charging in excess of 1,100, 1. 1.2 um, thousand rand, uh, so 1,200 1, rand. Mm, per ton. Um, per ton. Um, we, were, well, we, were, we, were, we were, sorry, we were selling to ESCOM at 350, 400 rand a ton. So why are we doing all these weird and wonderful things to sell at a much cheaper price? Well, here's the Does thing with sense? pricing. Yeah, I hear you. The thing with pricing though is it's not just... It's, it's not as simple as that. So just because I sell my product at one rand per ton, for example, doesn't mean that the design is going to sell his product at one rand per ton either. There's a lot of things you've got to consider. Where is my mind located? That's the first thing. Yeah, if I'm one of the few people around my area, I'm going to charge a premium for my product because I understand that it's very difficult for you to get it from any other mind sure. because there simply aren't any other mines. But if the power station needs a coal, I'll charge that premium. That's the first thing. Secondly, the price you're talking about is a landed price, which then includes transportation, right? So proximity to where you are with regards to the power station also matters a lot. There are power stations that are very close to mines. They literally don't even use any trucks. They'll use a conveyor belt, right? And then there are others that will use a truck and it will travel 80 kilometers. As you can imagine, it will cost a lot more to travel coal, to to, to transport coal 80 kilometers. By the time the lander price gets there, it'll be a lot higher. Even though we're dealing with the same spec kind of coal, it'll still be ESCOM spec. So the pricing thing, there's a lot more that goes into pricing. You're absolutely correct on on your points, but um, just the one bit that I like to throw in is how do you explain that when it's the same mine, two different owners, and someone is selling it at a much cheaper price? We could have gone more expensive or we could have remained at the same price that the previous owners were selling it. Why Still did doesn't mean you didn't have an inroad, though, with the people that you guys had a relationship with. I can understand that you Those, perhaps gave them a discount, but were, that doesn't negate the fact that you had an inroad. There was a business, there was a product, there was a taker. Mm. We were selling the power. We're not allowed to sell coal? No, no, I didn't say that. But I'm asking you, did you not benefit from having those connections? Benefit how? Because those people were friends with the Gupta family with whom you were in we, business. We have a mine. As a matter of fact, that mine has changed hands multiple times in its history. To design, you cannot sit here and tell me that if I'm your friend, yes. right, and we do business together, yeah. you're not going to benefit from that kind of relationship. But what I'm saying is if there's a history of business dealings, especially when an entity or a company or going concern has changed hands over a period of time, how is it that the scrutiny at this point is different to others, especially when we are selling it at a cheaper price? That I don't understand. Okay. Well, look, you heard the answer uh, and you can decide for yourself whether you're satisfied with it. There's so many calls we just haven't gotten to because the conversation uh, keeps going one way or another, which is, it's a mark of a good interview, I suppose, or at least a good conversation. I don't know if it's a good interview, but it's a good conversation. (laughs) 